Hey everyone, in this video we're touring a stunning and modern two bedroom home that's built with cob. It's completely off grid with solar panels, a rammed earth fireplace, radiant in floor heating, and a constructed wetland for natural wastewater treatment. We're meeting up with the couple who designed and built this space as a retreat for people who are curious about green building. They're going to give us a full tour, so let's go check it out. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. We'll tell you more about them at the end, and we'll give you what you need to get a huge discount on their VPN service. So this is our Cobb house. It's uh, just a single floor, just built on the slab, and it's completely off grid. Uh, we use solar panels with a backup generator. We have our own well on site, and we're set up for rainwater collection from the roof as well. And then we have a constructed wetland in place to deal with all of our wastewater. So it's completely self-contained here. One of the things I really love about this house is it's very quiet. We do have planes flying overhead. You know, you do hear uh, cars and stuff every now and again. But with the cob walls, it is so quiet in the house. The best way I could describe it, I guess, is a bit of a sanctuary. You come in here and it really kind of feels like you're stepping outside of whatever's going on out, out there. So I really like that feeling. I really love just the sculptural nature of it. It's just so tactile and you're, you're literally sculpting a house with your hands. It's a pretty amazing feeling to not just build, but sculpt a house. I have a diploma in architectural technology. It was very helpful with designing this building and getting it approved because of course we had to have a lot of interactions with the local building authorities. The majority of the house is built by myself and Tanya. We also had a carpenter that worked with me and we also had a general laborer who was here and to help us as well. Every now and again we would have uh, parties of uh, folks come up to help build the cob which is extremely labor intensive so it helps a lot when you have lots of people doing those kinds of things. The design of the house is very much an open floor plan. You know, there's a thousand square feet inside the house, which is not a ton, and there, 200 of that 1,000 is actually for the mechanical room. So you only have about 800 living square feet to work with, and so Tanya, when designing it, she wanted it to be very sort of open plan, open feel. And here we have the truth window. So this is a structural cob house. Uh, the walls are two feet thick, and this is what's behind the nice finished plaster of the walls. So just a, a mixture of uh, sand, clay, straw, water in a certain ratio. And it gives, you know, this sort of concrete wall once it's totally dried. You need to cover it in some kind of plaster, which is what we did here, which is a clay-based plaster. So our house is a structural cob house. The, your traditional cob house is generally a post and beam house and then they infill the walls with cob. And then the, the weight of the roof is held on those posts and beams. Difference with our house is the beams um, that span the many of the spaces of the house are held and sit on top of the cob itself. So that's what makes the cob itself load bearing. So then you have here the kind of um, mudroom areas. You'll see on the ground, we have uh, a natural pigment on this floor. This is 10 years now, light shining on this area, it lightens up the floor. So it gives that kind of mottled, marbly kind of look, which is what we we're going for. We have a closet as well, so you can put your coat and everything here. So I've made the, the shelving space here, but it's a good amount of storage space as well on the entrance. Here's the kitchen, and as you can see, it's really open. We wanted it to be very simple, sort of straight lines. It's got obviously some storage up on the shelves here, but there's, there's lots of storage down below. Uh, these are all made by the carpenter that worked with me when we were building the house, and on the island as well, there's tons of storage underneath here. So this here is a cast iron sink. Tony had this crazy idea of building an eco-retreat over time and so she found this cast iron sink that someone was trying to get rid of and this sat on our balcony for probably a year or two before we actually you know, started building the house. This stove here is a really ideal for off-grid scenarios because you don't need any power supply to run it. So this is a propane stove and so you just have a little 9 volt battery which causes a small spark and that will then turn on once you have the propane flowing and similarly for the oven it's exact same scenario you know very very close here you have an open dining room and not a big space but it fits really well with our 
uh, circular table that we have here and then opens right out onto the patio from here as well. With the passive design of the house, the idea is you have as many windows as you can on the south face of the house and there are overhangs that are designed in terms of how far out they go that you get a lot of the winter light coming in which will then heat up your floors. So we have these thermal mass floors and then in the summer the sun will not reach the inside of the house. You have that passive heating in the winter and passive cooling in the summer based on how high the sun is in the sky. So here's our living room and we have here a Rumford fireplace. So Rumford fireplaces are depending on who you talk to, really great or really not great at all. They're finicky in some ways, but they are actually the most efficient open burning fireplace ever designed. So they get up, give off a ton of heat, which is great, as long as you are operating it the right way. And the wall here that faces the fireplace is rammed earth. So this is a, it's about six inches of rammed earth as well. So we wanted to just to play around with different building styles where we could, and this is one example. I think it turned out well it's kind of as a feature wall for the fireplace this wall here um, is the same thickness as the walls that go all around the perimeter of the house um, so the idea is here is that we wanted to continue the curve at the front of the house that goes along the living room and then bring that same exterior wall in so you get a bit of a feeling of that outdoors coming in and being connected uh, this is our cob bench. As you can see, it's also curved. It follows the shape of this wall on the south side and then continues to curve in. And cob benches are really common in cob houses because they're so easy to build. It's really just an extension of the wall, so it's, it's all integrated with the wall. It's all one piece. We just added a couple coats of linseed oil to it, and that helps harden the plaster, uh, make it a little shinier, a little bit more durable, and a little darker to just give it a bit of a different, more golden color. Uh, there's lots of ways to finish cob, and we tried to experiment with a couple different ones on the finishing. So we're in one of the bedrooms. This is the east bedroom, and it's got vaulted ceilings, just like the most of the house. Um, and it's also got south-facing windows, just like all the rooms in the house, which uh, we designed on purpose to make sure that both light and warmth were getting into every single room, even here at the back of the house. Now we're in the bathroom. Um, it's a Jack and Jill kind of bathroom with a door going right off the, I guess what we could call master bedroom. And then there's another door over that side that leads you to the water closet area. We wanted the flexibility for more than one person to be able to use the washroom at one time. It almost makes like two bathrooms or one and a half baths instead of one. I purposely designed the bathroom so that the vanity flowed right down into the shower and it was all the same material. So this is cob and it's covered in a lime plaster so that makes it waterproof. Um, and then the curve of the vanity follows the curve of the outside of the wall. Um, and curves are really great in cob structures because they help with the seismic design and uh, the ability for cob to stay strong during earthquakes. Now we're in the west bedroom. Uh, we separated the bedrooms just for privacy and flexibility. So this is the far west side of the house. And again, it has a south facing window up top in the clear story to let in some brighter light and warmth on the dark floors to help heat it up a little bit in winter time. And then the windows are also all operable that are up there in the clear story. And then the purpose of that is to create ventilation. So we've got windows down low at the bottom of the house and then windows up high and that helps circulate the air so this wall is the west wall of the house and it's also the very tallest wall in the house. I believe from foundation to roof it's about 16 feet. So it's a, a huge vertical expanse of cob. It was quite a challenge to build. We put up these lovely pictures of cracked mud and weeds because this wall, um, as all cob walls do as they're drying, it sprouted. The seeds within the straw sprout as it, the wall is slowly drying. And before you're able to put the finished plaster on the wall, you need to wait for all those sprouts to die um, and show you that the wall is completely dry and ready for plastering. So here's the mechanical room and this is kind of the heart of the house, right? This is what keeps the house running. So right behind me is the solar off-grid system. This house has got four solar panels. It's about a one kilowatt system, which we always knew was a little underpowered in terms of keeping a house like this running full time. With any kind of off-grid technology, you always want to have a backup. So we have a backup generator that sits outside. So you can see in the walls here, this is the 
raw cob and you can see here the layers and this is you can tell this is a day where we went uh, about six inches and with this house because it's structural cob there was a whole series of extra engineering requirements that we had and one of the biggest ones was around earthquake engineering and traditionally what will happen when a big earthquake hits the ground shakes and a house is attached to the ground and the bottom portion of a house will change directions when that shaking is happening faster than the top half of your house which will shear some portion usually the corner of your house and your roof will then fall in and so these um, airplane cables are attached to our concrete foundation and then there's a wood plate that circles the entire exterior wall of the house and they're attached to those as well these airplane cables will hold the top of the wall which reduces the chance that you'll have shearing in your wall and reduces the chance that your roof will fall in so this here is our pressure tank and you can see it's a really big one our well is 465 feet deep so the, the groundwater is very deep because we're on top of a small mountain but we wanted a bigger pressure tank so that we can put more water in here and then hence run your pump less often. So this is our hot water system. We have this special hot water tank, which gives us hot water for potable water, showers and the like, but also in here, there are copper tubes which run through, which don't connect to the potable water, which heats up all these pipes, which then goes into our floor and it gives us radiant in floor heating, which is the primary source of heating in this house. So the constructed wetland treats all of our gray water and our black water. We have a septic tank in place which separates the solids. But instead of doing just a, a leach field, which is pretty common when you're off grid, we have the constructed wetland, which is basically a giant pond liner that was sized to meet the needs of this house and it's filled with organic matter and wetlands plants and the plants are what purifies the water so when all that gray and black water goes into there the roots of the plants um, draw it up and they naturally purify it so that by the time any water might spill over the edges of the pond liner it meets all water quality standards and it's a completely passive system it just is gravity fed there's no pumps or power needed whatsoever um, and we've never had a problem with it. It's a, a beautifully simple way to treat your wastewater. The walls of this house are two feet thick. Each inch of cob gives you an R value of about one. With a thermal mass house, even if it's cold outside, that coal is constantly pushing into that wall. And so you then have the inside of that wall is warm and they're constantly at battle. The challenge with that is it takes a lot of energy to heat up that wall because it is this huge mass. Building with Cobb definitely taught us a lot. We were a little bit surprised by some of the challenges that we encountered. One of them was just how much heavy labor it is. Uh, Cobb is a really heavy material and to be lifting it and sculpting it all day long is exhausting. And it's it can be stressful. Um, this part of the world, it rains a lot and in the cob doesn't do well in the rain until the roof is on um, so it can be really stressful trying to keep a cob structure dry during rain all those challenges i don't think we really foresaw and they definitely add to the stress of the building um, as beautiful as it is there were definitely a number of downsides we didn't see coming the process for us was very much a labor of love it was a super intense time but it, we're you know, very proud of what we did here We want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. We love their VPN service and we'll give you a quick rundown of what it's all about. So VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it's a service that protects your connection while you use the internet, which is so important these days. It protects your privacy with next generation encryption on multiple devices and it's super easy to use. I use it almost every day when I'm logging into important accounts, so I just turn it on and off whenever I need to and when the logo at the top of my screen is solid, I know that I'm protected. Right now, they're offering a huge discount on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash exploringalternatives. And when you use our code exploringalternatives, you'll get an extra month for free. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so this is a great time to give it a try. So that link is nordvpn.com slash exploringalternatives, and the discount code to use at checkout is exploringalternatives. We'll put the link in the description below for you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.